Okay, now we have the pinion. And this is where the steering wheel goes and you all know that part of it. And you can hear the bearing here. How, how wild and grady is that? But it's held on, it has a cup and a cone at either end here. And I've got them all jumbled up in my spare parts, but it has a, a cup that sits in the housing in here. It has a cone that goes in and then it has an inner piece that goes in there. So we'll, um, I, I suppose what we need to do to get underway is just undo the lock tab here. Fold that down. I'd say get rid of the keyway, the woodruff key. Easy as that. And now to undo this, we just need to hold the bottom of the pinion here. These are normally not very tight. Might be my famous last words there, but anyway, let's see. Um, I have an inch and a sixteenth spanner here. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's got a shorter handle. Had people sending me nasty messages. Two people the other day, getting up me for using a shifting spanner. So anyway, my reply is just when you do your videos, you can probably do it properly. I'll, I'll just bang along and do, just take me time and do mine. How I feel like it. This will undo. Very fine thread. Okay, so this should normally just bump out. I'll put it over near the edge of the bench there and I'll have an aluminium punch. And there we go. And look, there's a lovely looking bearing. Just beautiful. <laughs> the gear does look in good order. So what we need to do is hop up in here with a long punch of some sort and pop the bearing out here. Now, that's the top bearing. That's the inner. That's why that was getting a little bit gritty. And... Now the top has a cone and it has a little tin shield there. Uh, they think the tin shield's probably going to stop water, but <laughs> we know from my experience with this particular tractor, it doesn't do that for you. So all we need to do is I'll put this over in the vise and I'll, I'll just tap down on there. Make sure you've got glasses on and we'll buff all this up. We'll clean all the rubbish off it there. Now these little cups down the bottom there, Sometimes you can get them There we go That's a nice, nice easy kill and Now this next one, because it has a tin shield there um, You can see there's a bit of junk there too That's the bottom of the shaft, the, the main throttle shaft Where it turns and Yeah, I'd say it's just a build up of moisture and that that gets down there and just corrodes it out a little bit but um, we'll bring the screwdriver now so we don't damage that oil that little tin shield you try and feel for it and go right over the one side 
and we'll come over this other side. And there we go. So we have a little shield like that. So it came out that way. So it sits like that. So all the rubbish is up the top there. So the top bearing was this fella. And you can just feel the lumps and the crunchy and all that. So I'll go and tidy this up. We'll clean it all up. Um, I'll grab a punch and I'll bump this bearing off and I'll, I'll clean all this. And I'll come back and we'll just go through setting this pinion up. Um, look, there's nothing to it really, but we'll just go through the exercise and we'll come back when we're ready to go. Okay, we've been away and we've given it all a bath and we've cleaned the shaft. There's a couple of little marks there, but I've just polished that up with a little bit of um, 600 wet and dry. Up here's the same. I had to tidy that up a little bit. But the, the new bearing will probably just bump over that okay. So, look, we'll start off by placing some bearings in there. Don't forget, on the top one, this fella goes down there first. Then the cup goes in. And I've got a little disc driver here, a 44 millimeter disc driver. So I'll just give that a bit of a, a bit of a tap. Can't see much, but. That's still a bit loose. I don't feel it's sat in quite properly yet, so we'll... That feels better. And that little, that little wash is in firm there. So, same again under here. Get this little cup. Probably a little bit of lube wouldn't hurt. I usually put oil on bearings, but I didn't on that last one. Okay. So they're in. Now the next cab off the rank is this bearing here. So I, I should actually um, say that the fat end of the bearing cup goes into the housing so the two bearings come in opposing. Now this little bearing here I was hoping he would just pop down over there um, but look I've got some soft jaws here. I'll just Put him in the soft jaws and that'll we'll take him down. I've got too much junk here at the moment. I... So you need to pop him through the first one and bring him up in through to the second one. And same thing, what I'm doing, I'm just getting it in the soft jaws and just bringing it through. Nice and gentle. Doesn't sound nice and gentle, does it? Sound bloody rough, but look. It's just sitting in aluminium jaws, bumping them down through. So look, that's okay. Now, from this bottom end down here, it goes in from this end, so now we've got an aeroplane going over the top. <laughs> We're just fighting noise today, so anyway, won't matter. 
He's probably just having a look and see what we're doing. So put a bit of grease on there. I, I just like grease, even though this bottom bearing's in oil. Um, I do like to put a bit of grease on it. And then the bearing cup sits down in here. And then this other cone. So a, a normal tapered roll of bearings, two piece. These are three piece. And that's nice and free there. So we, I'll get a bit of grease going again. I just like the grease. The grease will hold it all central for us. A little bit of lube. There's no proper seal up the top here. Yeah, we clean this fella up and he should just come down over top. Now we can bring the nut down. Now, this was the bottom nut. Look, I don't think that matters at all. And we'll just tighten this up a little. Now, with all needle roller bearings, once you get them somewhere near where you want them, you have to turn them and let them all bed in. That's feeling a bit better. It's still off to the side a bit, you can feel it. shield might be just touching that a little bit but look it's not a worry for us but look, what I'm going to do is hang on to that bottom end I'm going to tighten this up a bit tighter than you would think it would need to go So that's nice and quiet now. So that's that straightened it up. So I'll get that. I'll just get the grips once more. I'll just hang on to this gently. Then we'll. Go a bit tighter than we should really. And what we're doing there, by going by over tightening a little bit, we're going to turn it and this is going to make sure that all the needle rollers are sat in their happy spot. And that actually loosened just a little bit as we were doing that. So it feels good. But you can feel that's just a little too tight. Okay, so we'll just back it off a little. There's no real pressure here, it's just... So now we know the bearings have gone home. We just do that up with our fingers. pretty good. I'll just see if I loosen it what happens. Now that's just a tad too loose in my eyes. That's okay. That feels okay there. And just keep in mind that if you can turn that nice and easily with your fingers here now, then there's no rough spots or anything like that. Um, when you get the steering wheel on, you've got a lot more purchase. So 
So once you've tightened it and let it off again, it sort of only just needs to just needs to be finger tight. No end play at all. It shouldn't have any at all. Look, that feels good. I'm I'm going to run with that now. The little lock tab. So we'll find that in a little happy spot here. And then we'll bring this bloke down. Now, when we bring this nut down against the other one, this other one is probably sitting back against the thread. So there's a good chance that when we tighten this nut up, I'll just back that out a little bit. Um, when we tighten this nut up, that it's going to firm it up a little bit. So, but look, that feels good. Here comes a little aeroplane again. So, <laughs> not to worry. He might be having little bits of test runs just to see how he how he goes. Doing a bit of training. I can see that plane registering on my sound meter. They're <laughs> quite loud. So we we bring this fella up fairly firm. If I put the vice grip, the multi grips around the other way here, it'll hold it a bit better. So that's just firm there. Now we need to see how that feels. And that has firmed it up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to back that off. I reckon that's a bit too tight now. So if I back this off. So we've got to back it off enough that we can just say this nut here, the one down the bottom there, just so we can say take that back half a flat, something like that. It's a very fine thread here. That fit? No, not quite yet, Lance. So we'll just go half a flat. Bring him down and tidy him all up again. And we nip this bloke up firm. And so that's just a little bit of backlash in the threads that we're dealing with. That's not too bad, that firmed up a little bit. Now, what you should always do is With most gears, just give them a bit of a one way, same on the other end, nice and square. That's just making sure everything's bedded in properly. If things loosen up a little bit then for you, well, your bearings won't in where they should have been. But look, I'm happy with that. I can turn that with my hands, there's no end float.
could be a smidgen tight, I believe, but um, with new bearings, I think I'll just let it go with that. I think by the time you get a steering wheel up here, you won't notice that at all. And better to be a little firm than the other way. So, okay, we'll knock the lock tabs down. That's that one. Now we need one coming back the other way. So they can't come off anywhere now. Now this little woodruff key, we could probably put it in now. That's just bumping him in with an alloy punch. It's not real straight there. That'll do. That's okay. So setting that up there, look, that's not hard to turn. It doesn't flow over on its own, but it's, look, that's certainly fine. Now, it normally has a, a little alloy cap over here, and underneath the alloy cap, they have a have a seal. normally that's s43757 now look if you now this goes down in there and the felt goes down in there and the cover comes over the top now look, with all this aftermarket chrome stuff um, you're going to be disappointed with it it's, it's not chromed as good doesn't matter what brand it is it's just not as good as it could be so I've got to have a look now, I can't remember which way that damn thing went. <laughs> God, it's hard to get good help, isn't it? Okay, I'll have a look. But anyway, we can put that on later when we're doing the other. I'll get the steering box set up, probably up in the vise here, and we'll work out how to do the backlash. Okay, we've got the steering box up in the housing here now, and you may notice there's a bit of yellow stuff there. Now that's a gasket sealer I'm using but it's called, and I'll try and keep my whiskers out of the thing, it's called Duralac anti-corrosive jointing compound. Now we're going to put the steering column on the top there but because this is a magnesium alloy housing and we have steel bolts, um, the things can jam up in there, they can get galvanic corrosion. So what we do is, I'll just try and lean over you here. We just grab the housing, sit it in, and at this stage, before I do that, I actually make sure the arms are straight up and down. Now, there's a little bulge there where the little screw is from the tin plate underneath. Um, I, ha I have both arms in line with that tiny little bulge there, and then we can pop the housing on. So, once the housing's on, we just do up the bolts and they've got the um, Duragel on them so the, if we ever have to take them out again in 50 years time we won't be all caught up or all bound up. So I need to shift this whoop, throttle piece out of the way and throw one on the floor. Pretty poor job if you don't chuck something around. And sometimes you've got to turn this a bit just to make sure it's lined up, but shouldn't be a problem. Now where'd that bottle I dropped go? There it is. Stop looking, I got it. 
You can stop looking now. Okay, there we go. Can you notice something wrong? This is what happens when you film stuff. <laughs> She's been a day of Elman. Stop start. Does that look a bit better for you? <laughs> Boy, it's hard to get good help. I find it really hard to find good help, especially when I'm working on my own. here get everything started and down quite a few threads before you tighten anything up that's just standard mechanical repair practice A little bit fiddly this corner bolt here, but anyway, that's all right. Should have probably a little open end here, shouldn't I? But anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll get there. Okay. So you can, there's quite a bit of slop in the top there, but when we hold the top, you can feel this movement there. And one thing I should have told you earlier was before you try and put the centre in, make sure you lever these arms both out as far as I'll go. And so you can feel there now, or you can see it, there's a little bit of backlash there. So that's where these bolts come into play. I can feel that's just touched the gear. Uh, 
Okay, so that's up solid. So there'll be no backlash, none at all. So you can feel that movement's taken out. So let's take him out, about an eighth of a turn. Oh, and we've got to hold the top. You can barely feel anything there. So I'll just take him up again. We'll just back him off that little bit. And we'll do the lock nut up there. So we can feel, you don't want this tight, you can feel, you can just feel a little, a little movement there. So we do the same around this other side, around the back. And what we're doing is we're bringing that, um, that steering sector across into the pinion um, to get rid of the backlash. So I'll just back this nut off a little bit. So we just take that right up. Right up until it stops, take it off oh, just a, a millimetre or so. And you can just feel a little movement there. And But there's, a th there's something you need to be mindful of here. Now, if we come up the top there a little bit, I'll bring you around the edge here a little, just to give you... A different view. Now, with the um, with the steering here, you can see there's just just the slightest amount of movement up the top there, and you can just feel a little bit there, a little bit there. But what we have to be mindful of is with these two arms coming straight up and down here, we're actually in the straight ahead position. So chances are this tractor spent an awful lot of time in the straight ahead position. You know, they'd turn the corner then go straight ahead and it, it might be turning for, you know, 10 seconds and it might um, be going straight for minutes or hours. So, um, so what we've got to look at here is if we take this steering wheel off centre a little bit and then see what you have. And see that there, that has tightened up. So, so what that tells us is there's just a little bit of wear in the centre there. And if you don't back this off or be mindful of this, when you drive along, in the centre it'll feel nice and soft. When you go to turn a corner, when it gets out to the extremes, it actually becomes hard to turn. So we'll go right the other way. And just by on the top here. That just goes a little hard there. So in that harder position, we have a feel of them, and they're both they're both just a bit tight there. So look, we just come like a, a sixteenth. Just you can just feel the pressures come on that screw again, and so you just take that off. Yeah, and there's just, just a little bit there now. So you need to be mindful of that. That's turning nicely. So yeah, not too bad there at all. Okay. Next thing, we have to put the bottom on. I've got to get a gasket for that. But um, next time you see this, uh, I will probably have it on the tractor um, because I'd rather get the video out. Um, for you, seeing it's been a popular, a popular ask. But once again, when we put this, when we put this bottom plate on, and the bottom plate sits here, and we have a paper gasket in the middle, which I haven't got. I thought I had one, but you know, thought thought. Um, once again, I put this stuff, this Duralac. I put this on the little screws where they go in there. So this needs a bit of a tidy up yet. And um, and just a just a little bit of tidy up in general, but 
For those of you who want to know how to do a steering box up, that's about covers it. Okay, that is all we're going to do in this video for resealing the steering box. I did have a look and this felt goes down that way and seals on there and then this spring comes down over the top. I think it goes this way. I actually had the old one sitting there still. So we, we used that as a guide and this keeps the spring in central and that goes up in through there. So I'll probably use a new felt and all but I will use the old um, the old collar because we're trying to keep this tractor looking as it was, you know, the old barn find look. But um, hopefully that's enough with the steering box. Now, when the bottom's on, um, you fill the oil up to the bottom here. Um, I'll have a look and see if there's a proper measurement. But next time you see this box, it'll be on the tractor, bolted back on, ready to go. And we'll talk about how we're going to set the front axle up, how we're going to do the towing and checking the oil and all that. So that's it. That's the a long-weighted steering box video.